I'm sorry. You guys couldn't hear me at all. That's how excited and nervous I am. I am so sorry. This is horrible. I want to go and cry in the corner. Hi, everybody. Now that you can hear me, um, and now that you can see how embarrassed I am, there was no audio that whole time. I hate my life right now. We're doing an unboxing of Back to the Future. <laughs> Back in time. <laughs> oh. This is a big deal for me, and I totally botched it, and I can't undo it. I'm going to live with it. I'm going to live with my mistake on the biggest board game on my channel so far, for me personally. This stain is going to live on this video forever. Oh, man. I'm so sorry, folks. But you, but you couldn't hear me before was gush about how amazing the presentation is of when you take off the lid and you see the flux capacitor oh, it's amazing and I, and I was talking about how the usually the whole box is shrink wrapped not the board um, I feel like Funko and or Pospero Hall has done this a couple on a couple other games in there releases, but oh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Moving on. You can see maybe a little bit better here. Look at that awesomeness. That's right up. That's full frame right there on the close-up cam. So this is the board. Back to the over game, overhead cam here. And look at this beautiful art right here. We have Hill Valley in its glory. We have the clock tower in the town square, uh, notable locations. We have Lorraine's house, Lou's cafe, George's house, Doc Brown's house, Hill Valley High. Oh, and no one, no one can forget the north or south shops. <laughs> Very iconic locations, but um, you can see for the most part it is, it's each part of town is broken up into different sections on the board and you can move around the, to each location as one of the heroes but the uh, George, Lorraine, and Biff markers cannot go into into the town square so they are, they are going around or I guess either way I don't know but look at this rule book it's the Tales from Space comic from the 1950s uh, cost 10 cents. Look at this shocking sci-fi rule book. <laughs> right down here at the bottom. Oh, the the amazing, like, the, the nerding out here is strong, folks. It is just unreal. Uh, what, let's see here. I got this great comic book art. Oh, man. So we got what comes in it, the objectives of the game, which I'll do a quick talk over. Uh, set up. Look, and it comes with a, well, we won't spoil it, but I'll just do a quick thumb through here. Oh, I can't wait to look at some of these cards. Look at these awesome dice we're about to see here. So that's the rule book. And FAQ of movement on the back, that's great. Lots, some games, it's kind of a waste of space. They don't put anything on the back of the, of the rule book when there's plenty of space there. We have this cardboard, piece of cardboard that turned a, uh, face down to reveal it is the love tracker we need to uh this is a co-op game by the way probably should have mentioned that so everyone who's playing along is working towards the same goal of uh getting um jo george and lorraine to fall back in love with each other because marty screwed that up in the movie if you haven't watched the movie it's just spoilers by the way <laughs> um Everyone is working together to uh, increase the love track. So once the tracker is on the, one of these three hearts, George and Lorraine have fallen in love, and um, you have to make sure that the photos, the, the family photo, does not fade away. Um, if we can get the DeLorean to, from the start location all the way to one of these three spots here um, before the end of the game, which we'll show what that is like. Uh, you win the game. Um, so what do we got here next? These are power tokens, and they're pre-punched, which I like. Which I don't. I kind of like punching uh, tokens out. It's very therapeutic and fun. But um, 
Every once in a while, it's nice to make to not have to worry about punching tokens. These are pre-punched, pre-bat, and they come with a bag. So these are different powers. So this is what once uh, this is what the face down side looks like. This is the face up right here. There we go. Um, so the more of these power tokens you have, I don't know if there's any power of love tokens, <laughs> but anyways, um, so this is actually a starting p uh, power for one of the one of the characters. Uh, I plays Einstein, Jennifer Parker, and you guessed it, Doc and Marty. But uh, you would spend these. Oh, there's a Doc starting token there. I see there different colors here, Einstein. These are generic ones. These. Are, the back, this one uh, is a generic one that you can add to your player board, which, let's see if we can find the player boards. There we go. So here's the player boards. We'll just stick on this camera here. So everyone's got their own. Uh, look at this uh, Marty with this awesome art here. Kind of looks a little bit like, um, is it the Archie comics, I think? I don't really know my comics that well. Um, but it's not what we we're normally used to seeing when it comes to Back to the Future. But overall, I like it. Like that's a great, great piece of art for Doc right there. Um, so you can see here. Here's a Doc starting look uh, power matches his player color there. So on your turn, you'll you'll spend power to do action. So this one is roll die, which we'll talk about later. We've got Jennifer Parker. Jennifer Parker called you twice, Marty. <laughs> And then we have Einstein. <laughs> um, so that's a little weird, like uh, ha you know, because obviously Doc and Marty are the main characters, right? But then having Jennifer and Einie along to help out, just kind of we need people to help. We need we need a total of four players, right? This is, wouldn't be as nearly as much fun if it was only a two-player game. And all the player boards on the back have that. These are it's uh, just a. Uh, flimsy cardboard, but they definitely serve a purpose. Mine came a little bendy there. Hopefully I can flatten that out, but not not the end of the world. Um, it's on the art side. So, let's just say we'll play with Marty here. We'll do... There we go. Oh, this is in the way. Sorry. I can get that up. I have to rearrange my, my camera angles. Let me just kind of do like that. So if I was playing as Marty, that would go there. And then here's, uh, I believe, start, you start with five, right? So you can see those white empty spots here. And then I need more there's Marty starting. There's another Marty power. Here's another one. And one more there. Oh, perfect. So, and then the rest of these with the dark blue. Will be, will be face down, and then during different objectives, uh, when I complete different objectives in the game, you'll uh, draw one from the top, and I believe it goes face down. At the end of the turn, you'll flip everything back up, so the, you like, you know, I use this power, I exhaust it, right? And then at the end of the turn, I flip, flip everything back up, including the ones I just got, and if there's this open space, I can add it there, and now that is an option, that is an, one of my powers that I can use in the future turns in the future. Ha ha! <laughs> um, and then, you know, if you, uh, you can only have up to eight, so once you get your ninth, you can uh, choose, so in this situation, flip this one over, I can get rid of a lower powered ability and put it in, and put it in, rotate the new one in, which is pretty cool. Um, it's the same for everybody. What else we got here? We got a turn tracker that tracks our turns. Let's go close up here. This is a double-sided turn tracker. So this is for a two or four player. I don't know if I can get the whole thing in. There we go. So down here, oh, I'm blocking, sorry. Down here, two to four players. Um, so if we're starting with a four player, there's a marker in a bag, a little QB, that will uh, go here, starting at the game for the four players. And if you're starting with only two players, you're gonna start down here on the track. And then at the beginning of every turn, you are going to do, uh, you're going to pull a new trouble card, which, if, which is a card that comes out on the board, and then you'll do a movement uh, action, which moves um, George and Lorraine. And then here you can see the uh, three-player side. 
Um, and then, so we just keep taking rounds until we get down here to the end game. If the cube gets here, and again, if the DeLorean's not on its spot, and the uh, Love Tracker's not in the right location, everybody loses. Everyone wins or loses together. Haha, <laughs> here we go. I was really excited to see this. This is a clock tower dice tower. How freaking cool is that? Oh man, I'm excited. Um, so how does that go together, one would ask. It looks like it goes like so. And I wonder if we if it stays together in the box. But it looks like it's relatively easy to put together as I'm st I say that as I'm struggling to do so. But this little piece just slides in like that. This little mouth comes down here. There we go. Look at that. And it's printed they uh, correctly to where it, it is uh, fully, fully printed all the way around. That is really awesome. So you can just drop your dice in the top here and it helps randomize the dice and it's just awesome and there's even a little spot to go right there on the board Perf fits perfectly looks amazing we can even uh whoa sorry hopefully you don't get a little too sick here moving the camera around but look at that you just drop your dice boom that is so freaking cool so we'll go back to that, and then we'll see what else we got in here. We've got, oh, this baggie has, I'm making a mess here, I got tiles everywhere. So we have, uh, oh, we also um, have to get uh, some parts of the uh, pieces to the pieces of the DeLorean. Uh, we have to collect them. Oh, got my light shining through there. There we go. So we got three different parts that are scattered throughout Hill Valley that we have to acquire before the end of the game as well to, to, to uh, get the DeLorean running. We need gas. We need the cable to run from the clock tower down to the street light, and then we need the hook to click, uh, to attach to the wire at exactly 10.04 p.m. when lightning strikes the clock tower so we can send you back to the future. So these are, um, so these are the unacquired side. And then it tells you right here where to put them. So this one goes on. The, um, uh, the, the, the cable is going to be at Hill Valley High, which is anywhere in this location here. We'll go back to the game cam. So this big spot right here is uh, Hill Valley High. Then we got South Shops is where the gas goes. I guess that's, is that where the Texaco station is? Texaco, I thought, was, I mean, you know, Texaco is more on the corner, if I remember right, but hey. <laughs> and then the clock tower is where the hook is at. So that is going to be right, yeah, right there. So I don't know. Do you put? I guess you don't really want to put the clock tower there because that takes up the whole spot. But I'm going to put it there, and it's just going to be very cramped right up there because I am a perf perfectionist. If you haven't met me, actually, it would be right there. So I don't know how that would work, but I'm going to try and, I don't know. Moving on. That's where that goes. So we have to, uh, the player tokens have to, we have to move around the board anywhere we want. We can jump around. Um, we have to go to these locations, and we have to, in order to collect this spot, uh, piece, we have to roll that matching icon. The I believe it's a flux capacitor icon, which I've been talking about the dice enough, so where the, without showing them off, where the heck are they? They're in their own baggie. These are the eight awesome looking, colorful, beautiful dice. And in order to collect uh, the gasoline, we have to be in the sh south shops area of the board. And then we have to roll certain dice. And as long as we get two flux capacitor icons, so this if we roll this one die and we get the double there, and we can see the double flux capacitors. I believe these are called knowledge. This is called prepare the. Anyway, anyways, we're gonna just call them the flux capacitors. <laughs> Roll two of them. In that spot, we gain it, and then this icon, this uh, 
token, and it goes into Doc's work, uh, Doc's house space, and we then can move around to the board and get the other pieces. Um, and speaking of, we've mentioned the. Uh, I'm bouncing all around. Let me finish with the dice. So the, <laughs> these dice have different abilities. So this, this green die is, has a double, which we've seen, double flux capacitor, right? This die is different. This, does, this has no flux capacitors on it, but it has courage, which is what the star is, I believe, which is what we use to fight Biff. And it's got the double, right? It's got a, and it has, I think all dice, yeah, all dice have a Biff icon, right? All dice have a lightning bolt. Which, um, which are wild, so you can use this icon to represent any other dice face you want. But then here, so this, this dice has flux capacitors on it, this one has stars for courage, and our doubles, and then these other two, again, with the biffs and the, and the uh, wild icons, this, this die is uh, fat move, movement, fast movement, I believe, and it's got a double there double arrows, back to the future arrows, where'd it go, bang, and this is hearts, which you can take a guess at, is how we help move the track, it's the, our love dice, love track, love shack, baby, and we'll come right over here to show off, we've got six tokens here that represent the family photo, and Biff will do his do the things that he does so well to help break try and and break up George and Lorraine. Um, when we roll Biff dice, um, has potential to fade the photo from existence, erased from existence. So eventually, these will fade. Let's do it in proper order, right? Dave goes first. And then, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm blanking on your, on Sister McFly's name. And then, I'm too, I can't, I can't get rid of Marty. I just can't do it. But that is how uh, we can lose a game if, if the uh, photo completely fades away. And then, uh, let's save this for last here. We've got our player tokens and whoop, we've got our nasty Biff to token here. He's very menacing. Look at he's got he's got his uh, uh, hands in the fists. That's not good. He's ready to to do some nasty Biff stuff. Who do we got here? We got Jennifer Parker. in the light there. You can see her. We've got Aini. Look at that. <laughs> Not Copernicus. We have Arnie. Aini. I'm going to say Arnie for some reason. I'm sorry. We've got George. And we have Lorraine, the two lovebirds. So they'll be moving around the board. We need to get them together, um, I believe, to help do some stuff. We've got Doc here. Uh oh, and focus there, hopefully. And then we have Marty. Marty, you gotta come back with me. Where, Doc? <laughs> back to the future. Alrighty, I'm done nerding out there. And then there's um, we mentioned the DeLorean's got to move from one spot to the next. We. Use this awesome-looking pre-painted DeLorean miniature. A little bit smaller than a Hot Wheel or a Matchbox car, but look at that in focus. Hopefully, silver paint. We've got the, the there's no Mr. Fusion in part one, not until the very end. But we have the uh, the cap there where you put in the plutonium. My fingers covering up. And look at that, we even have, it's probably not going to be in focus, but you can make out the out-of-time license plate. I'm sorry that's not in focus, but it's very small print, but you can, make, you can kind of make it out. So this guy, 
goes here, and it goes, and you use the uh, the yellow dice to, oh, look at one, two, bang, right? And then eventually he'll come here, and then he, um, the time machine has to make a stop at Doc Brown's house and cannot move past until the, the team has collected all three parts for the Dorian, and then they'll back... He'll continue on the track. This all won't be here. <laughs> and then we'll keep going here. And as long as it's in one of these three spots uh, before 10.04 uh, p.m., you win the game. Uh, we've got... we got two... Uh, um, we're almost done here. we got uh, these little trackers. And then we've got... Right here, just plain old cubies. So we looks like we've uh, we can. I don't know which one's which. So you can just pick. I'm gonna say this one goes on the love track. Love track, baby. I'm gonna sing that every time. And then looks like yeah, this one will go all the way over here on the turn tracker. Um, so those are pretty self-explanatory. Now let's take a look at trouble cards. So these go out on the board. There's three different levels of them. Uh, looks like yellow level one, orange level two, and then uh, red level three. Uh, you uh, you can break you break them out into their different levels and you shuffle them up, and then uh, the turn tracker tells you which level to put out and I believe how many is it or is it just it's always it looks like it's always just one, but if, um, you can see. The uh, first level turns, it's going to be one level, one treble card, and eventually two, and then level three. So you shuffle these up, flip it over, and let's see. Gang eggs George's house. That's not good. And this card will then go on the George ho George's house location on the board right here. I am so messy. <laughs> and then when your... Uh, when you move into this space, you can attempt a roll. So then here, it's like, oh, I'm going to use this one power to roll two courage dice. So, which is kind of thematic. Like, you need courage to defeat the um, Biff's gang, right? So then you'll roll. Oh, look at that. I've got <clears throat> uh, two courage. I only need one. So I, I defeat uh, them. There's also an ongoing effect, by the way. Uh, move George to George's house. So as soon as that happens, George will go to his house. And George cannot be escorted or moved by any movement cards while this card is in effect. So that's a good thing. I immediately knocked it out, right? I immediately defeated this trouble card. And there's a reward. Gain a power token. So I would gain from the top of the stack another power token, which goes face down until um, the end of my turn. And then this card gets removed and defeated trouble. Um, you can see I rolled a Biff icon on the die. That moves Biff um, one location. So he, Biff, Biff and Lorraine and George, they're out on the board as well. Let me, let me clean up a little bit here. <laughs> so, you know, you're not, we're not the only ones. The players aren't the only ones moving around in town here. Um... So, that card, where'd it go? Where did it go? There it goes. So, trouble comes out, goes here. George was at the high school. He immediately comes home to watch Mystery Science Theater, his favorite TV show, to find his house egged. Um, so, in the future turn, I'm, and he can't move around, because normally I can, care, I can um, ex uh, escort... George or Lorraine around town to have them meet up, um, which is which is a good thing. Helps the love track, um, but this actually hurts because George cannot be can't move move around the board until uh, we defeat that trouble. Like I said, I'm kind of re repeating what I already said, so I apologize. But anyways, I defeat defeat that trouble. So now George can move around the board again, and they um, they can move either way around town square, but they cannot go in town square, right? Um, so Biff, uh, but I, I rolled a Biff die. Biff dice immediately uh, moves Biff 
I move I, I have one icon. He moves one spot closer to Lorraine or George. Um, if they're equal or distant, he moves closer to Lorraine, and bad stuff happens. Um, but we can uh, we can slow down Biff from moving by punching him. So if I was in his space and I roll double courage again, I can knock him down. I so I want this is a double courage die. So I use a knockdown token. There's three of them in the game. I forgot what bag it came in, but we'll go here. And then um, this slows Biff down. So in future rolls, we rolled another Biff icon, like Sam over right here doing something. I roll a Biff, we remove a knockdown token, and then Doc goes, he rolls another Biff, Biff then stands back up. But that's a cool way to slow him down. I am sorry, probably made more sense if it was on this, <laughs> this uh, view here. But these tokens slow him down. Uh, because you can't uh, punch him, you can't knock him, you can't knock him down even more. Um, you can't knock him down again until he stands back up, by the way. So that's that. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna, we have in here are two more, two different types of cards. They're the same size. We are, no, we got a couple actually. We've got opportunity cards, we have movement cards, and item cards. That's what we have left. So, let me just break these out here and then we'll do a close up. So, movement card. Here we go. We shuffle these up. And these move Biff, George, and Lorraine. So at the start of each round, so the uh, so the very first turn here, we'll do it. We'll put out. We'll place a um, trouble trouble card, and then we'll do a movement card. We'll satisfy a movement card, which means we draw the top one off the deck, and then we let's see. This one says move George counterclockwise three spaces. So George is here. Counterclockwise is going to be one, two, three. And then uh, Biff moves one. So Biff is going to move into George's space. No, no. Um, because he was closer to George. And then it would be the player's turn to take their actions. But you can see sometimes just Biff moves. Here we move Lorraine. Um, uh, see, counterclockwise two spaces, and then Biff moves twice. And um, so let's say uh, we have a Biff moves twice icon, but Biff only has to move once before he has to stop moving. Because once he moves into a space with either George or Lorraine, he stops. So if he was here, and then um, Biff moves here for one, there's one more Biff icon left to satisfy. Sorry, my thumb is in the way, and it's probably super blurry. Work on that. So we have one, we satisfied one of the Biff icons. We need to satisfy the other. We unfortunately move down the love track one. So we actually, that's why there's negative four here on the love track. We're just inside the camera so we can see that. <laughs> so we're actually in negative one here, so that's really bad. While you're in the negatives, um, if there is an effect that tells you to, that has you switch, um, flip over a photo, you actually flip over two photos. And that would, in this situation, means we just lost the game, which is super sad. Um, so that's movement cards. We have opportunity cards. And here we go. We got the awesome looking blueprints for the flux capacitor. So these come out and they go to, uh, this is a pickup supplies. So this is goes to the south shops. We'll have to uh, go to that location, roll the the appropriate dice uh, value, and then we'll gain the reward, the benefit. So we can see what some of more of these are. Look at that. Uh, provoke Biff, and then um, it's on the, the, the chase through uh, around Town Square. Uh, build, a not, build a not to scale model of Hill Valley. Oh, look at that. Uh, and look at this. Scare George. Look at that. Oh, Darth Vader from the planet Vulcan. That's amazing. That says that George's house. Oh, and then draw one power uh, token, raise the love meter by two, and then gain the cassette player item. So let's take a look at that really quick. We've got... Oh, perfect. <laughs> Here's We can see we've got different items here. 
that anybody can collect. And I believe um, you can collect as many as you want. There's no limit. Look at that! Mind reading element! Oh, radiation suit. And then here's the cassette player. And then you exhaust this um, just like your power tokens. You flip it face down so it shows it exhausted. And you can use it once per turn. Everything flips face up again at the end of your turn, so you're ready for the next turn. And then for the cassette player, on your turn, if you fail a trouble or an opportunity challenge, exhaust this item to, dr to draw one power. So that helps improve your power for future turns, so it, hopefully it's easier to complete a challenge. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, look at the great art here. Look at the electric guitar. What does that do? Exhaust this item to refresh up to two exhausted power. <gasps> Ooh, and you keep doing stuff as long as you have power. So that's that come in handy. You can do more stuff. Backpack, you may hold up to two extra power tokens. This item is never exhausted. That's awesome. Biff's homework, look at that. Exhaust this item to move Biff up to your location. This card may not be used in Town Square because he can't go to Town Square. It makes sense. Because Hey, Biff, come over. I got your homework. <laughs> Which you can pull, pull him away um, from Lor George Lorraine. That's awesome. Uh, binoculars for your bird for bird watching. <laughs> Once per turn, when you uh, use a power token, exhaust this item to draw two tiles. Keep one and discard the other. Heck to the yeah! I love that's so thematic. Look at George's notebook. That's amazing. Exhaust this item to move George up to two spaces. Look, I I can't believe it. Lorraine's locket. Oh, we gotta read what the mining reading helmet does. On your turn, when you draw a movement card, draw two, choose one, discard the other. That's pretty cool. Read some minds. Oh, man. That's that's really cool. That's so thematic. That's just amazing. Um, but that is pretty much, that's definitely everything in the box. I always like to check and see what sometimes there's a one or once or twice there's been things hiding underneath the insert but no there's nothing i'm not gonna tell you which game or games have hidden goodies underneath inserts that's something for you to discover but you never know sometimes there's an extra little goodie under the insert but um look at this look at this mess but this is a beautiful mess oh i cannot wait to play this and what's nice is since it's a co-op game, I can actually play this without any uh, with, with, with physical distancing that we currently have going on, because it is a co-op game. Um, so that might be coming to the channel very soon. Uh, hit the like uh, on this video if you'd like to see that. Leave a comment below. Um, that is me rambling and gushing over this awesome game. Um, it looks great. I can't wait to play it. Like I said, I'm the one of the biggest Back to the Future fans, if not the biggest. <laughs> Self-proclaimed, of course. But just look, you know, look at this, the rule book. I mean, look at that. That's just amazing. Um, I am probably going to play a game right now to uh, get the rules down, and then maybe in the future <laughs> we'll see it on the stream. But that's it, folks. That's me done rambling for this evening. Back to the Future, Back in Time from Funko Games. Give them a check. Uh, check them out. I know it's going to be hard to find for a little bit because of the raves reviews about it and just everyone loves Back to the Future. If you don't, don't talk to me. Um, <laughs> but that's it, folks. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day. Bye-bye.